I fell in love with my dad on his deathbed. I spent spring of 1995 by his side as he worsened. I watched the pussy willows out the window of the rest home ripen from green buds to furry little animals. I watched his body waste away and waited for a sign that our hearts would soften. I began writing his eulogy in my mind. Here at last lies Harold, born and raised in a delicatessen. <laughs> Amazing he lived this long, the way he ate. <laughs> the way he cooked. He never met a vegetable he couldn't render unrecognizable. <laughs> Cabbage marinated to a mystery. Carrots pickled to oblivion. Delicious, but... I never knew how food was really meant to taste till I went away to college. <laughs> I never knew how love was really meant to feel until he welcomed me home. But he never had, and I never went. Oh, I had deified my handsome daddy when I was little, and then when he outshouted my mother and demeaned my dreams, I defied him, and I stayed away until my sister called for help. He had opted for his third triple bypass, and the new hogs valve was hiccuping in his heart. As soon as he got home from the hospital, he knew something wasn't kosher. The arrhythmic organ was chugging along, but the rest of his body could not keep up. It was like being dragged along behind a horse, poor man. He wanted it to end. Not because I'm some brave guy. I can't see any other way out. There wasn't. And yet he and his stubborn life force fought any evidence of failing. <laughs> this is normal! The hospice worker reassured us. This is normal for dying. Hospice. Hospice care made it clear that Dad's descent was irreversible. Dad. He surfaced from a fitful sleep, struggling to understand where he was, who the hell I was. Pointless, get well balloons were hovering near the ceiling. Oh, it's you. You still here? Dad, I'm going to Manny's sandwich shop. Can I get you something? Uh, yeah. Uh, get me a ham sandwich, thin slice with garlic pickles, Mm -hmm. And Goulden's mustard. Sure, I said, grabbing my coat to go. Uh, and thank you. He had not said thank you to me since I had grown up and away from his entitlement. This was more than sandwich gratitude, and I was determined to take nutrition from any crumb he offered. <laughs> well, you are welcome. Driving through the old neighborhood, I put a positive spin on his eulogy. <laughs> how that man could concoct, how that man could create. My father invented mozzarella marinara, and my sister and I were his accomplices, spooning layers of marinara over thick slices of mozzarella on top of matzahs. <laughs> and we topped those matzah pieces with Matzo pizzas with lamb sausage slices from the Greeks. <laughs> Neighbors would bring their ethnic dishes over and my dad would celebrate the differences in tastes. My father was a true Juminist. <laughs> so dad's old friend Manny made the sandwich and helped me carry an optimistic eight cans of Insure out to the car. He was 73 like my dad, but still fit and feisty. He hates that crap, Manny says. He needs to keep up his strength, I said. The, for what? In his eyes made me sad. For us to love each other, I knew inside. When I brought him back the sandwich, Dad's drugs were wearing off. He opened his eyes, I opened the bag, he opened the sandwich, he raised his eyes to mine. Hey, I asked for the ham to be Thin sliced. <laughs> Hurt scalded my stomach and darkened his obituary. <laughs> <laughs>
My dad inherited his overeating from grandpa, dead at 55. And his fat, happy cooking from grandma, dead at 50. One whole branch of that family was wiped out by heart disease. Oh, the Holocaust didn't help, but it was the heart disease that did them in. The hospice worker took me out into a hallway. She was carrying a clipboard with his history on it. His heart will give out soon. You should call your family. There's nobody left to come. He always ate himself sick and angry, and he drove my mother to divorce and me away. Well, it wouldn't have mattered what he ate. Those boys never had a chance. What do you mean? Well, it says here that Harold got rheumatic fever in the Air Force outbreak. All those guys got severe heart damage. Well, he must have had a strong will to have lived this long. Huh. Returning to his room, I covered his hand, so much like mine, with mine. Sensing my empathy, he opened his eyes and he said, You know, I can be a jerk too. <laughs> I'm not sure that was my dad, the drugs, or the dementia talking. <laughs> but that sounded oddly like an apology. <laughs> an apology and a thank you in the space of an hour? I knew it wouldn't be long now. <laughs> I love you, Daddy, I said. To myself, I said, please, let's let this one in. Hey, I always loved you, kid. Even when you were mad at me. I always still loved you. That guy could always make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> but this time for the right reason. He left his body behind at 5 a.m. I wondered how big the presence of his absence would stay in my mind. Still pretty big. And 20 years ago this spring, May 10th, on a ridiculously beautiful day at the New Haven Jewish Cemetery, I eulogized. My dad loved to picnic on this gravesite, giving him free for his service in World War II. Hey, it's a lovely little piece of property, he'd say. Why wait till I'm dead to enjoy it? <laughs> <laughs> My dad knew loss too soon as his whole Delhi family left him behind. Their section of this cemetery is so crowded, you got to get in line and take a number to get in. <laughs> <laughs> Food was the currency of love my father offered most freely. Our hungers weren't quelled, but he gave us big appetites for more. Mm -hmm.